Hey y'all, I'm Mari. And I'm Mila. And we are Chew, Chew on that. that! So Chew on That is a cultural talk show that looks at different BIPOC cultures and brings on a different guest every episode so they can talk about their cultures and also food that connects them back to their culture. But we have a little something special planned this episode. Mari, do you want to run us through it? So today we'll be talking about our own cultures. Yeah! <laughs> um, so y'all can get to know us a little bit better. So about me, um, I'm Venezuelan American. And what culture means to me is music, specifically salsa bachata. Um, when I think about uh, dancing, I think about like salsa dancing to Oscar de Leon, which is an African uh, Latino in Venezuela who makes a lot of salsa music. Or I think about making ayacas with my family, which are traditional Venezuelan tamales. Or I think about calling my mom or just embracing my culture and every part of it and just being a part of a community that's so great. Yeah, Mari's uh, already told me a little bit about some of the things she loves about her culture. She does journalism, so I always get to read like her great articles about Venezuelan Yay. things going on in Boston. So when COVID's maybe over one day, you should get the chance to check some yes. of those things out that yes. yeah, Mari mentioned. Yeah, no, I like, thank you for the plug. But yeah, <laughs> no, I literally love talking about my culture and it's something I'm really, really proud of. And yeah, once COVID's over, even when COVID uh, is going on, y'all should check out some Venezuelan restaurants, specifically thinking of Titulias, which is a place in East Boston that is really great and um, deserves to get the credit that it is. So yeah, but Mila, you tell us a little bit about your culture. Yeah, so I'm Chinese American and for the fans at home who may not know, I'm adopted, but despite that, I still feel like there's a great like Asian American community in Boston, but also back home where I'm from in Dallas. And for me, it's something that sort of like transcends that language aspect. Um, like a solidarity, so to say. I know that's like a bit of a corny word, but I've like, going to school in Emerson, I've gone to meet a lot of other people who have had like similar experiences to me or who may have like grown up in an Asian household and introduced me to like some of their favorite like dim sum dishes and things like that, so. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. and like specifically, like when you talk about language, like I feel that so much because as a Venezuelan American, I don't speak Spanish. And a lot of the times it's like feeling like questions of identity, like am I really Hispanic? Like am I really a Latin, Latino woman? Like am I, like is my identity worth it? But it's like the thing is it's like language and culture, like culture transcends beyond language. Cause it's like, you're still gonna have those in your like roots no matter what. And it's like not fair to like gatekeep because um, yeah, it's like we have a lot of, at least for like Venezuela, we have a lot of different cultures. We have a big, um, indigenous background, we have like an African background, like being like the sixth largest African diaspora, it's like a lot to expect of everyone knowing Spanish because that's a colonizer language and not everyone knows it and that's okay, you're still um, a part of your culture. But yeah, so for all my BIPOC out there that feel that way, um, you're valid. Do you want to hit us with a little Venezuelan fun fact before yeah. we get eating? Um, so, kind of mentioned the fact earlier, but Essentially, the reason why we have a big um, African diaspora is because we were part of the transatlantic slave trade, which is really, really, really bad. Um, but we take a lot of roots or similar roots specifically um, within our food, uh, which is like one of the biggest staples being the platano, which is a banana that we either let be ripe and then we make it like a sweet, um, sweet little, I guess you could say a like, bananas that you put in a uh, fried like oil and you continue to fry it until it's like ready and like sweet and it's a big dish that we like to serve with everything we like to serve it with our arepas we like to serve it with our cachapas like it's just a staple dish yeah i didn't know that part about like african diaspora in relation to venezuela yeah. or like the rest of south america because in the u.s you're always taught like about american history so it's really important yeah looking back and knowing where everyone comes from yeah. and recognizing that. No, exactly. Uh, my fun fact uh, sort of brings us back to the present, but did you know that in America there are more Chinese restaurants than McDonald's, Wendy's, KFC's, and Taco Bell's combined? So when I first read that, my mind was blown, and I think it's because um, whenever I'm on a road trip, 
I always see one after the other, especially we're both from Texas, like going maybe from Dallas to Houston, you'll see a billion Taco Bells yeah. like off the side of the highway. Yeah, like you see, yeah, exactly. Like every Taco Bell, every McDonald's. So it's like crazy mm -hmm. to think about, but yes, that's a little bit background about us, a little bit of background behind our culture. So now let's get to chewing. So the first dish that we're going to be talking about is one of my personal favorites and it's known as the cachapa. So the cachapa for me, um, my mom used to make it for me growing up every morning um, and typically it is made with queso de mano which is basically like similar to mozzarella cheese but more sour and um, the meal is made with corn, sugar um, and oil and water and we get um, corn flour and we put pieces of corn in it and we fold it over like a pancake and we put the cheese inside and then we like cook it until like the cheese is stringy it's so good and they typically serve it with um like a, a green sauce that's made with like cilantro and like mayo and like uh lime i think and garlic and um yeah it's really really good it's one of my personal faves and a little fun fact about it is that it's said that this meal was made about 1800 years ago from uh, indigenous civilizations uh, from modern day Metazola. So little little fun fact to chew on. Yeah, so it goes way back. Yeah. This has been enjoyed for the ages, I think. Yeah. Do you have like a favorite way it's served? I know you mentioned like cilantro or sauce, but do you have like a favorite? Uh... I typically like it with the traditional way of it being like with cheese on the inside, just like the stringy cheese. Sometimes it's made with um, carne machada, which is uh, shredded uh, beef, or it can be made with like grilled pork or like creamed cheese. But I like it the, the old fashioned way, it's pretty mm -hmm. good. Yeah. I'm such a sucker for cheese. So I'm no, very I'm excited. Not. You know I love cheese. I'm, I'm a big cheese, cheese lover. Yeah. yeah. So I'm very excited to try it, see how Orinoco Kitchen prepared it? Yes, yes, yeah. Orinoco. Yeah, I'm excited to have you try it and tell me if it's really, really good. And if you don't like it, then I know you hate Venezuelan Americans. So then we'll be looking for a new co-host after this. <laughs> applications due. Uh, applications due <laughs> next week because we're kicking Mila out if she doesn't like it. But yeah, really excited. So let's dig in. We're going to use a spoon because I guess we don't have uh, the accessibility of a knife. So let's use it. The one time I've had this, I think the cheese wasn't oh as melty as this. So I'm pretty excited to have it like warm. Um, I think the version I had, it was more like a cheese block or something like that. Ooh, you see the cheese that we were talking about, y'all? Okay. Okay, yeah. This is pretty good. I like the sweetness of the corn. I wasn't expecting it to be a little sweet, um, but with like the sort of saltiness of the cheese, it's really like a good flavor profile. Like you can taste, you can taste the little pieces of corn. Like, cause as I said, like before, like you see the stringy cheese, like you see that, like that's nice. Um, but we have like little pieces of corn in it, like actual pieces, which is like really, really good. Um, cause you can buy like a uh, instant mix of like cachapa, it, but it doesn't have like the pieces of corn. So like, it's like essential. It's like a, it's mandatory basically. So the second dish of mine that I'm going to be talking about today is better known as quesillo. So quesillo is the Venezuelan version of flan, which is traditionally a Spanish meal uh, or dessert better to say. Um, and it's translated in Spanish as small cheese. But how we make our flan or quesillo, um, we make it with sweet condensed milk and egg holes rather than like whole eggs, rather than just the yolk like they do um, for the Spanish version. So um, my experience with quesillo is that my mom would always make quesillo for my birthday. She would make it for any family event and like whenever I come home after being at college for a while she will make it which just like makes me so happy because um, how you make it it's actually pretty hard to make I'm like I don't know the specifics but you just make it with like because it's like an egg custard so you just get the eggs and like uh, like batter it I guess and then um, you get sugar and basically like uh, 
sugarize it, or I don't know what it's called, caramelize it. And then with you, a little like, blowtorch? Yeah, or? or not a blowtorch. You like put it over like the the stove, oh. and you wait until it gets like to like the sugar, like the normal sugar, like you know, like the cane sugar, mm-hmm. and it turns into like a brown sugar, and you like pour it into like this. Um, my mom has like this, uh, like this silver. Cake container, dish? like like silver cake dish that like closes over that I'm pretty sure she had since like she lived in Venezuela. Like it's old, it's beaten up, but it does the job. It's the best. My mom makes the best one, and yeah. So I'm gonna have to come over. That's basically what that little yeah. story told me. Basically, that I said, so "Come delicious. home, come home with me." And my mom will make you casillo. Like my mom always makes casillo for any person that comes into our home. That's a really special guest, and you know you're a special guest. So. Feel free to come. I feel so honored. Thank I'll have you. to get in my car, drive past my Taco Bells to get that Casillo. <laughs> What's your experience with Casillo, I guess, flan? Um, I'm more familiar with like flan. I don't think I've had like a Venezuelan version of it, um, but flan is pretty yummy. Right. I yeah, can't go wrong. So I'm excited to see how it's a bit different. I know a lot of like Thai desserts also use sweet and condensed milk. And I really love that flavor, so I don't know why yeah. more desserts don't utilize it. So I'm pretty excited to see how rich and creamy it can yeah. be with those changes. Right. No, I'm excited. I'm excited for you to try. So let's dig in, y'all. Let's try the Casillo. I'm excited to try it from this restaurant because I haven't had this before, but you can see the little pores in it, like the little, the little cheese with the glace. So let's try it. I'm gonna try the Casillo now. I'm gonna take another bite. It was really good, so. It's a lot, this specific one, cause uh, Casillo is known to be more heavy, more dense. This kind of feels like a flan cause it feels more like easier to be detached. So I feel like this is a fake Casillo, but still is good. Still has like the caramel flavor, you know what I mean? Yeah, like Mari said, it kind of like tastes like flan. Um, I think what makes this different from other flan I've had is maybe the color. This seems like it's more soaked through or something like that. The other flan I'm picturing maybe have like a yellow tint to them, um, but this one's really nice and sweet. Uh, I still still fan, but I feel like my mom's the best at making it, so maybe I just have a bias. I know some people don't like sweet desserts, but I'm a big fan, so I thought that was pretty good. So for the first dish I'm going to be talking about, it's scallion pancakes, which is usually on the appetizer section in Chinese restaurants, but I'm very excited to eat scallion pancakes today because I've had them since I was growing up. Every time we'd go out to eat, my mom would order them and mm-hmm. I would also love like bringing friends to the restaurants who hadn't had them before because they're so delicious. I don't know how to <laughs> say it. You could just eat and eat and eat like three orders and you still wouldn't have gotten enough of the scallion pancakes. They're so crispy and light. But what are they made of? Yeah. Uh, they're usually made with flour, like chopped up scallions mm-hmm. and it's served with like spicy oil on the side or maybe like a soy sauce type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, have you had before? Uh, I actually haven't. I've seen people eat them, but I thought it was made of eggs. Oh, so you were sort of like... Yeah, yeah I'm not a... Wary. Fun fact, ladies, I am not a fan of egg. I really do not like egg. Um, particularly, I'm a hater of egg, considering that uh, Casillo is made with um, literally egg custard, but I still hate it. I cannot, I cannot do it. Um, Casillo is the exception. Casillo is the exception. The only is what I'm time saying. eggs are going to be digestible yes, for you. Yes, yes. Because I, I thought scallion pancake was made of egg. Yeah, yeah. They're very like flat and crispy, and there's like little oh. layers to them, so it's nice and flaky oh. too. Oh. Um, nice, nice, nice. But yeah, I do have a little fun fact I'm going to bring to the table. But scallion pancakes are said to have originated in Shanghai, and some people think that it may have been influenced by Indian cuisine or Indians who were living in Shanghai at the time um, because its flatness is very similar to naan. Oh, yeah, I didn't so, know that. That it was like, could be from like Indian background. Yeah, I know. Oh. We're learning all about how the different, yeah, different yeah. groups are influencing culture. Oh, wow. So I'm excited for you to try it. If you haven't had it before, hopefully it's not horrible. <laughs> hopefully it's not horrible. Hopefully it's not horrible. Do you think I'll hate it? 
I don't know that pineapple fried rice last time. Oh, that, was a bit of, <laughs> that was a bit of a doozy. A do- I think I think I'll be okay. I'll, yeah. I'll see. You know. You can't go wrong. You said it's delicious. You said it's delicious and crunchy and amazing. So we'll figure out if I think the same. But so, yeah. Yeah. Let's get eaten. Um, let's move on to the scallion pancake, the infamous one that I had been avoiding because I thought it was made with egg. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Very delicious. I'm not mad. I really, really like this actually. I feel like I also don't like pancakes too. I'm really, I hate all breakfast foods basically. Um, but I like this cause it's crunchy. It has like the little crunchiness, this little flakiness, like that, that makes me like it. I always get worried um, when having scallion pancakes, if you leave them overnight, they're maybe not as good as when they're fresh out of the kitchen per se, but this was really good. I like the flakiness on top and the middle is a little bit denser, um, but the flavors are really good. In ways, it reminds me of the empanada, um, but like an Argentinian empanada, because they use like certain types of discs and it makes it like, the same like crunchy feeling. Um, so it reminds me of that. I feel like it's pretty good. I can see how it's similar to naan. But yeah, um, overall, I am surprised by the scallion pancake. Did not know that I would actually like it. Um, but since of my connotation with the egg, my egg vendetta. So if you haven't had a scallion pancake before, I think you should go out and buy one immediately and eat it and see for yourself what all the hype is about. I turned Mari into a believer, so I think you at home also have the chance to be swayed by a scallion pancake. So since you talked about the scallion pancake, what's the, what's the second dish you got in mind? Oh, I'm pretty excited to present this second dish. This one is kanji, which is basically a rice porridge. But my mom would tell me when I was a baby at like the orphanage, I would eat nothing else. Like they'd always be feeding me this rice porridge. Yeah, the orphanage. Yeah, the orphanage. I said Annie. Let's, let's bring it back. Yeah, the but, orphanage. Yes. I think it's like a pretty good baby food too, and also the elderly like it a lot. Oh. Because it's it's not as uh, thin as like normal soup broth since it's a porridge, but still got that watery aspect. So it's nice to just kind of eat. Mm. Nice so, little steamy soup. So then what is it like made with like exactly? Because you say it's like thick and like rice and water, but I'm like, like what's like the taste or like general taste or like t- mm-hmm. general like what's it made with? Yeah, people can add like onions to it. Like think of it as a blank canvas, but then you mm-hmm. could add like your spices, onions. Some people do it with eggs and meat in it uh, just to dress it up a little bit mm-hmm. so it's really customizable to the user's choice dare Ooh. i say dare i say they use it yeah mm-hmm. today we'll be having plain kanji uh just to get a feel for it but then we can start to imagine what else we might want to put into it mm-hmm. so then wh- where's your fun fact you know you know what on chewy we love we love a good fun we love fact. our little fun facts this is an educational show so it's okay if you tell your parents you watch it because you're learning but did you know that kanji is not actually a Chinese word, even though many people may know it as kanji, but rather it's the Tamil or Southern Indian word for rice porridge and also pronounced kanji. Um, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's like seeing that connection again between Indian cuisine and culture and also Chinese culture. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, which like I feel like you don't know about normally until you actually take the time to yeah. research and see that history of like yeah, because I literally patterns. like never knew about it until like me and you were talking about it today. So it's just like the importance again of like looking your history, y'all. So are you excited to get eating? I'm excited to get eating. So let's get to chewing. I'll try the kanji now. All right. Let's see if it lives up to how I had it when I was a baby. So. I'm gonna try the kanji because I think I may have had it when I went to uh, like this dumpling house in Houston, like Houston Chinatown. So I'm gonna see if it's the same, but I'm excited to try. Yeah, it is kind of like Asian oatmeal. Very, very thick, so. It gives me oatmeal vibes. 
oatmeal porridge vibes, like Mila was saying. It's got a little saltiness to it. Um, people don't expect maybe if they're having it for the first time. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't expect it to be like a little salty. It's like salty porridge. It is, it's the same thing that I had in Chinatown. I feel like I'd want to try it with some toppings because I feel like I can't really tell too much. Um, I could see myself having it maybe with some egg on it or a little chopped up scallions too to give it a little bit more kick. Um, but yeah, this was good. But I can definitely see how this would be good like when you're sick or something. It's nice and warm and it's not as thin as soup. Um, so when it's nice and hot, it's just something good to like get into your system. So Mari, after swapping cultures, learning about each other's, trying our different foods, what are some of your final thoughts and takeaways? So my final thought and takeaway, or I guess my two final thoughts and takeaways. Um, first, I didn't know that Chinese food had a lot of Indian culture ingrained in it. I literally never knew, but it makes total sense now, especially mm -hmm. when we think about the naan and like the scallion pancake. Um, and also, I didn't know that I would actually like scallion pancakes, considering the, the thought that I had in my head that it was made with egg, so. It's always good to have low expectations, then be blown away. But yes. now you can take these scallion pancakes home, show them to your mom, yeah. like a new boyfriend, kind of, right? Yeah. It's something yeah. new for everyone to chew on. What's your little takeaway? What's your takeaway? Yeah, for me, the cachapa stands out because, as I said before, when I had it, it wasn't with melted cheese. It was just kind of like, a block um, but it was really nice having it like melted over the entire um, sort of corn disc yeah so to say it's so weird to think about that like you only had it as a block I'm like I can't imagine I don't know what happened in the oh, lost in translation yeah because I'm like the melted cheese the whole like beauty of it so I'm like the fact that you didn't mm -hmm. even have that first experience but I'm glad uh, we got to we got to fix that for you yeah, once again, blown out of the water. I could see it with the shredded meat you were talking yeah, about, like folding it over. Right. Sounds so delicious. Yeah, no, yeah. But mm. yeah, um, I think that's our takeaways. I think the biggest takeaway that we've been talking about this whole episode is just making sure that you check the history behind cultural, your own cultural background and or listening to the people's cultural background and their stories that they provide with it. So providing that space for them, I think very important and providing space for everyone in those types of communities so we can all share our stories yeah but, thank you yeah. for tuning in and listening to ours and we'll see you next time on, on chew, chew on that, that. bye y'all